So going back, going back to up and say so last time you were here, you were you were promoting up and it was about to come out. Um, how quickly does something like this actually sort of start again? I mean, did you already have these ideas beforehand, or was that something that you then have to go to the sort of drawing board and just start from scratch? I'll bet when we were here, we had kind of the inklings of it already. But, yeah. you know, the, the, a lot of times we get asked about, like, where did the idea come from, as though it's sort of fully sprung, developed already from, from one brain. And it's really a, a, a group effort and takes many, many years of iteration and trial and error, a lot of error uh, and a lot of trial. <laughs> And, and actually, the original idea that you had and the sort of completed film we've seen on the screen, I mean, that's a massive journey then, presume, because you're researching and you're talking to people and you're, and you're sort of, you know, can you tell us a little bit? I mean, I mean, the research project in particular, you went off to the jungle for, for up. How yeah. glamorous was it for this film? Not quite as glamorous. <laughs> we got to talk to psychologists. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, got, got pretty good. I mean, uh, you really did your homework on this film, didn't you? We did. We actually we talked to uh, neurologists, psychologists, all sorts of folks uh, asking about um, uh, emotions and which ones there are and what do they do and all that kind of thing. How, why, how do memories work? Why do we forget? You know, a big, big, I mean, a lot of the answers were, well, we're not really sure, but, uh, and that was actually good for us. Yeah, it sort of unlocked it a little bit. I mean, you, Pete <clears throat> said very early on in the development, this should be the mind, not the brain, right? And yeah. so that let us, I don't know, take an artistic approach to it. Yeah, and that coupled with the fact that the scientists were at 100% sure meant we got to just make it up, which is what we did. Right. <laughs> and um, this film actually, I mean, as well as all the research you did, there was some research you were doing at home as well, because Ellie, who's your daughter, who's here today, um, <clears throat> did actually kind of sort of feed some of those initial seeds, didn't she? And I don't want to embarrass her, but I guess she's heard this so many she's times. She's used to it at this you know, point. She's right? really yeah. used to it. But don't can you just tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, well, I have two kids, and, and watching them grow up uh, was... Uh, as a, a lot of you guys are probably parents and you know like there's a certain phase of life that you're on the floor and you're playing with them and there's fun and then they get a little older and they change and that's not bad it's just that they become different people um, and part of you wants to go back and play on the floor with the dolls again and, and that's never going to happen again for me uh, and that was very sad <laughs> uh, so that, and, and as I'd come to work Jonas has younger kids and he, he would come in and be like Oh, we didn't sleep at all because the kids were awake at 3 a.m. And, and I, I would go, oh, you know. Which would make uh, me go, oh, man, what's happening? Yeah, happened? exactly. Yeah. And that's really what kind of fed the whole idea of the thing is uh, growing up and the difficulty of that. I know for me, uh, junior high was a really difficult time. Uh, and uh, I guess I'm still dealing with that because that's what the movie's kind of about. So let's move on to, to Amy. Um, I mean, before, we're going to talk about you for just for a moment, that's all right. But what was it that drew you to Amy originally, um, so, so, so in terms oh. of, as, as a voice for Joy? Joy was the hardest character of all of them to write, uh, mainly because when we made her very enthusiastic and energetic and a driver, you kind of wanted to run away. You know, she was just not uh, a, a character that you wanted to spend a lot of time with. And so we were pretty upfront with Amy about that when we met and said we were having this difficulty with this character. And, and uh, you were pretty. Oh, I just reminded them that I'm very likable. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys like oh, the movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a relief. Yeah. Did you cry? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Did no, the kids? So, so oh, kids no. only. Did you guys like the movie? Yeah. Did you cry? No. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> But Peter's right in the sense that it could have been a very one-dimensional role, just being Joy, but actually you have to, you've had to really nuance that, both within what was being said, but also the way you delivered it and you performed it. Well, thank you. It was because of Jonas and Pete, we, we worked hard on modulating her. She comes out of the gate really manic and um, strong, and she has to drive a lot of the beginning of the story, especially, I mean, she does that thing which is like, this is so-and-so, and this is so-and-so. She's kind of narrating, the, like, this is the idea of the movie that you're about to see. This is the premise of the movie. Um, um, and if it had just, I think, stayed there, it would have felt a little crazy. Um, but what was so nice is in the script, you know, in the story, Joy, just like Riley, has to, you know, learn that it's okay to feel. And sadness is her guru, you know, and sadness slows her down and and Joy gets sad for the first time, and we see it. Uh, so just getting to, to do that arc, you know, it's what, uh, what good films do is they have characters 
with good stories and good arcs, and Joy is certainly one of those. And I think that one of the things that's really remarkable about the film is that as well as being, you know, it's funny and it's exciting and it's moving and all your emotions are completely on a kind of, you know, a roller coaster, actually it's a film you could absolutely see in the future could be used kind of almost educationally. It could be used, you know, for kind of, you know, for kids who are having kind of emotional problems and it really is, I think, something that helps people understand a little bit about how their emotions and how their mind works. And I would challenge the parents, <coughs> sorry to interrupt, I would challenge the parents that are here with kids today and kids too today that are here, think about your core memories. And if you're a parent, ask your kid what they are. It's really interesting, the answers you get back. Because the things that you might think are um, <laughs> the ones they remember, <laughs> it's not. And, and as kids, think about it too. And what are your islands of personality? And, and I have little boys and I'll say, huh, isn't it funny how anger doesn't listen, you know? Um, does that ever happen to you yeah. when you get angry? And then they'll be like, I know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I, mean, really, I mean, you talked about the research element, but I mean, it really is things like when you go to sleep, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of sorting out what are the memories you're going to keep. and what, I mean, all of that stuff has been completely rooted in kind of science, hasn't it? Yeah, that one in particular we, we learned from uh, Berkeley scientists that, yeah, when you, during the day you store all your memories in what's almost like a USB stick, you know, kind of limited space. Uh, and when you sleep, uh, that's all transferred to long-term, longer-term memory. Um, and that's why if you stay awake for days and days, you can't remember stuff. Uh, so it's, uh, we tried to e echo that in the film in some sort of a fun way, you know, with the machine thing. So, yeah, a lot of, a lot of stuff we learned about didn't make it in, but um, a lot of it did. And, and even just the idea that emotions have jobs, you know, which was kind of a head scratcher. Yeah, that was interesting. Talking to like Dr. Paul Ekman and Dr. Keltner who, who are, we brought on the show to help us sort through that. That was really eye-opening as we started to make this film about emotions um, and realizing that we don't really understand everything there is, believe it or not, about emotions. So the fact that, yeah, they had cl clinical descriptions and that they have roles and that uh, an emotion like disgust, that you have that for a reason, that really fascinated us. And that's where the, if they, if you have them for a reason and they have jobs and if they have jobs and they're going to try to do a good job and that became one of the drivers of the writing and really gave us a toehold into that and it also for me it's where the movie went from this really fun idea with a lot of potential worthy of a movie uh, to something that could potentially be important you know as you're talking about your daughter and I'm thinking about my kids and we're thinking about our emotions and memories and that they have jobs and I don't know we thought maybe this would be a very American thing because we spend so much time um, be honest, uh, avoiding our emotions or well, sadness and yeah, and remember well, I think joy, I think joy is joy emotion. is a very yeah. American <laughs> character because joy is kind of like, what's next? And follow me. And she's not a good listener, and she, you know, <laughs> right. and she's kind of like optimistic to a fault, and and then doing so, she's missing yeah. nuance, and she's not, uh, you know, she's not, uh, she's like, I can fix it. She's got a, quite a big yeah. ego, all that stuff. It's very American. She's young and that, and exuberant. And uh, she's kind of all the good and bad things about America. Um, and, you know, sadness is, of course, you know, French. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you remember, I remember, I remember we were talking and uh, she's French. <laughs> I was wondering, who's, who's from the UK? Let's guess. I'm going to say... The, the most repressed one, isn't it? Fear, fear, maybe. Fear, maybe. Oh, I don't know why. Yeah. I think uh -oh. It's fear and anger all, all at the same time. That's uh, okay. Uh, anger is an incident here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I just remember talking to you about like, our kids, and we, we were saying, like, yeah. we literally say, as we're riffing on some things, like, we literally say to our kids, like, don't be sad, no. or don't be good. Like, Stop we, crying. Like, like it's a command, which isn't right, of course, <laughs> but we do that as yeah. parents, and that was, I don't know, that was just part of us reflecting on this was a deeper well than maybe we thought when we started, which was which was actually a really fun part of the journey. Because the whole thing about how you need to have a balance of all those emotions to actually work, right, completely comes across, doesn't it? Yeah, um, and also that Riley, the female, you know, setting of the film, is um, allowed to be angry, which is a very uh, still kind of a revolutionary thing for young girls to be yeah. allowed to do. So she gets mad when she's skating, and she. You know, she gets mad at her parents, and she tries to run away, and and her loving, lovely parents don't know what they're doing when they say, like, well, this has been a very stressful time for us. Thank you for being our happy girl. Right. You know, it's what we do all the time, which is we congratulate yeah. our kids for, like, keeping it together. But really, you know, 
it's okay if they didn't. And uh, it's, a, it's a lesson we were, I was learning as I was doing, working with these guys doing the film. I mean, could we just talk a little bit about the animation challenges for the film? Because it just seems with every Pixar film, you're just pushing the envelope, whether intentionally or not, there's always something that comes up. And in this film, in particular, that kind of ethereal, kind of light quality with Joy and the other characters, I mean, that, from an animation point of view, must have been incredibly complex, wasn't it? Yeah, I think one of the things I wanted to do on this film was to make the emotions look the way our emotions feel to us. So in their design, we figured out this way of almost trying to capture energy, these little points that kind of move around. They're kind of kept together, but there's a glowing quality to it. And then, too, in, in movement, you know, we grew up on Tex Avery and Chuck Jones and, you know, these wonderful cartoons that were more extreme. They're almost like a Hirschfeld caricature uh, in the movement. You know, they're taking uh, the feeling of being angry or whatever and, and dramatizing that or however you want to say it. Um, so that was nothing we'd really done to this degree. And uh, we were, we were uh, it was really fun. And you talked about the script a little bit earlier. Amy, from your point of view, when you came in to voice the character, was the script set in stone? Did you have room to kind of work with them and to kind of improvise and so forth? Well, it was really in great, great shape. I mean, it, they had already worked years, actually, <laughs> on the story yeah. before I um, joined. And, um, but we did uh, work together a little bit in the beginning just to kind of maybe fine tune how just that big problem of how to make Joy a character that you were rooting for. Uh, if you don't ever think she's vulnerable, then you're not ever worried whether or not she's going to be okay. And, um, and, and, you know, pitching jokes and stuff. And it's this, uh, it was a really wonderful uh, experience to record together because we were always kind of trying to find the best joke and idea. And then there's a certain point in animation where you have to, you can't improvise yeah. anymore <laughs> because it goes and were you the... were you recording with the other emotions or were you doing that all independently no <laughs> i recorded with phyllis smith the wonderful phyllis smith who gives i think an oscar-winning performance as sadness and um <coughs> i yeah, do she does. Uh, i think it's the <coughs> most beautiful performance i've seen in a long time and um we we did some stuff together which was really fun and helpful just because for timing and they you know they're on a journey together they're the you know Hope and Crosby of, of <laughs> Pixar, <coughs> and you guys don't know that what that reference is. Uh, <coughs> but uh, and uh, and uh, so uh, and and with Richard Kind with Bing Bong, mm -hmm. we got to we got to record together. But with everyone else, it was because of the great editing of the film that it sounds like we're all together. And um, in terms of other voices, obviously John Ratzenberg is back again. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, there couldn't be a Pixar film now without him, presumably. Nope, it's the law. And. Uh, <laughs> In, in, in the dad's head, with his emotions, um, how did you find the guy who was anger in the dad's head? Uh, <laughs> that was uh, the amazing Pete Doctor. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I mean, was that something you kind of really wanted to do, or did this work? You know? No, what we do is we, we do a test version for ourselves before we bother the real actors, just to see whether it's all working. Most of the time it's not, and we do it again and again. Um, and so I was just, I was what we call scratch. Um, but we recorded real actors, and I think ran it past John, and he said, "Yeah, I think we, you know, I, I like Pete in it, and, and, the angry and John Lasseter <laughs> too. So let's leave that one." And, did, yeah. did, is, your, is one of your ch children in it? There's a couple yeah. little voices. Yeah, there's some whispers in the school that we, you know we get to get our kids in there yeah. to do it. It's uh, yeah, we. I mean, there's a lot of things in the, the film that's us. You know, kids' drawings on the. Yeah. When Riley draws, that's one of Your my kids. kids has a little drawing oh, in there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and I love in the film the credits where it shows all the babies that have been born during oh, yeah. the making of this movie. It's a busy time at Pixar. I don't well, <laughs> that's a, that, that fun fact there. That's uh, that's that block's a little bigger because we didn't have a film last year, so it's like the baby boom. Oh, okay. Pixar. You got the double. Yeah. Yeah. Still, I mean, whoa. <laughs> I know. And, and is it right that because um, I've not heard this of, with other films, and maybe I'm wrong, but certainly you changed some of it for the Japanese market. Yeah, yeah, we did, because uh, apparently in Japan, broccoli is not disgusting. <laughs> uh, they, they love it, so we had to make something else. They were like borderline offended that yeah. we <laughs> did that. So if you see the film in Japan, it's, it's, what is, it's bell pepper pizza that's mm -hmm. ruined San Francisco for some reason. And then that's propagated. There's a couple scenes with bell peppers in there. So we had to go in and, I don't know, redo seven or, seven or eight shots yeah. for, the, for the Japanese audience.
Well, we could make up a story about how it's deeply rooted in psychological research, but the truth is it was just for laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> uh, we needed that shot in uh, dinner, that sequence. We're cutting between, what is it, like 18, yeah, 18 characters, characters and four sets, and we wanted to just immediately know where we are, so we just did the dummy thing of putting massages on everybody and glasses on everybody. So just for, for clarity, really, was the, the, the real reason. But, but later really we thought, we sort of just like, well, maybe... Yeah. You know, it's it. Uh, it was sort of just after the fact that when yeah. maybe when you're young, you're, you're you're not as calcified in who you are, and so you have various voices and things. And then as you get older, that settles into place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's, that's, that's uh, our smart answer. <laughs> but Pete's right. We just wanted to make sure it was clear. Um. I know for me, like the the things that Riley goes through are the same things that I did as a kid. You know, dealing with. Uh, new friends and what do I say to fit in and am I wearing the right clothes and all those kind of things so yeah I, suppose I don't it think would be, but, but as a woman I, I will say that yes and why I think the one thing that would be different is there is a bit of an expectation on young girls and young women to be caretakers sometimes mm. and that's what I, I was talking about earlier which is I love that when the parents say like you are such a great support for us uh -huh. right um, thank you for you know, bucking up. There's a there's an often a societal expectation for young girls to not be in touch with their anger, and to uh, not uh, uh, even though we are uh, often uh, labeled as very emotional, we know our emotions and everything's very emotional, <laughs> but we actually like sometimes aren't allowed to express physically our emotions in, in the same way, and and our parents sometimes expect us to be a bit more mature and, and ready for stuff than we are. I mean, I mean, you, you got. I have Sorry. two boys, and so it's always like boys. Uh, uh, I'm just saying that boys are kind of jumping and 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 like and you know pretending everything is lava. They're they're six and four, but you know. <laughs> and but th there's a, there's a thing of like boys will be boys, right. but but and 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 which is also true. But I think sometimes young women are <sighs> carry a bit of a burden in that they have to, uh, you know. They're parentified a little early sometimes. I don't know, and so I think that was that was something I thought that was very specific to Riley because she's a good girl, and she does well, and her parents love that about her. Well, you you um, work with an online resource called Smart Girls, don't you? Which yeah. Is, um, you know, I think if people haven't seen it, it's, it's amazing. And I just kind of feel in a way this would fit in really well with some of the work that Smart Girls does and some of the messaging from Smart Girls. Thank you for saying that. I I, I uh, yeah yeah the same kind of feeling, which is that you know, the hardest job in your whole life is to be comfortable in your own skin and be yourself. And the love story in this film that they wrote is really Riley in love with herself, falling in love with herself, making sure that she loves herself. And um, I love that that is the story of the film, that the boys are just kind of, not even, you know, the idea of a romance is off, off camera, like just a hint of it. I mean, Joy doesn't even care when when the boyfriend generator shows up. Joy's like, mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which will probably. But I've always liked that sadness kind of looks at that like. <laughs> yeah, sadness. Huh. Yeah. And of course she goes. <laughs> well, she's French. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was to coordinate the movie. It was very difficult because it was a. It was a really, really, I thought, a great idea that, that Pete had. And when he, when we sat down and he said, we should make a movie where we meet our emotions and we go inside a little girl's mind and we could go all these places like dream production and uh, long-term memory. And, and I just kept thinking, oh, that's great, but oh, man, that's hard. How are we going to? Imagine reading that on a piece of paper with, without seeing any of the visuals that you saw in the film. We had to think of every single thing. Every single thing was something we had to design and build, and it took about 400 people to uh, rally around that idea, and it took a big hunk of everyone's lives to, to coordinate and manage and, and bring on Amy and, and our great cast to record the voices, and uh, you know, Pete, how fast do, do we animate a week? I mean, we... It's about a second a day. A second a day, you know, when you Per, you've got, per animator, wow. so it's So slow. when we go, the movie should be... 86 minutes or 90 minutes, I go, 86 is good. 86 <laughs> is good. Uh, just a long, long time. But we're very proud of it, and it all somehow came together because of the talent of so many great artists and performers and musicians even, and, uh, and uh, we're very glad that we were able to show it to you.
Um, you know, when I, when I was, would do joy, I would have to stand up and move around a lot because it's kind of part of the, part of the, of doing her was having to be really energetic. So it kind of was because you had to spend a lot of energy doing her voice and no one is happy all the time. The, 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 the whole point of the film is that, that no one's happy all the time and that's okay. In fact, sadness really can be the best thing, you know? It can make, it can make you know, you feel better when you talk about being sad and just try not to always make yourself happy. So I wasn't happy all the time and I'm certainly not happy all the time. Um, but it was fun because playing Joy meant that you could be really loud <laughs> and act really crazy and um, run around and do really silly things. She was really silly. So that part was, but I got really tired at the end and I would sleep very well after I, <laughs> after I played her. Okay. Well, we have this idea at, at work that um, we screen the film as we're making it, we bring it to other people that, are, that we work with. And they are not working on our film, so they're in a better position to kind of see it and give us opinions on what works and what doesn't. And, I don't know, some, somehow they sort of pompously got named the Brain Trust. And oh, one of the writers says, you're supposed to do air quotes whenever you say Brain yeah, Trust. True. Uh, but it does end up being a very helpful thing because you get very close to things. You know, as you're drawing or writing or anything for any length of time, you start getting so absorbed in little small details that nobody can really see or the wrong things or whatever. And so this process of, of showing it to people uh, about every three months, uh, though we hate it at the time because it always feels like, well, it's not done with I, you know, you, you're sort of forced to do it. Um, but in the long run, it ends up being a very, very good thing. Yeah, and I think it, it to speak to the brain trust and the process of Pixar, um, it's Pixar is a place that's just built of filmmakers. So there's no real executives other than you know, John Lasseter is the is the executive, and he's a creative executive. He's a he's a film director. So everybody comes to the table. Uh, you know, my boss, Jim Morris, who's a general manager, as a filmmaker. And so you get in that room and all you're basically doing is just channeling a really smart audience that, of people that want to go to movies. And we've never thought of these movies um, as anything other than movies. People often say, oh, you know, animation's a great genre. You guys are great in that genre. And we, we get our back up at that because we've never thought of it as a genre. A Western is a genre. You know, horror movie is a genre. Animation is a medium. And we've always approached it as a medium, and we don't start from a point of trying to make films for kids, although we, 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 we do. We make fa films for families. We really make films for us, and I suppose we're like kids, so that's, but they're truthful. I mean, that, these are the films we want to make, so we've never thought, uh, should this be simpler or more accessible for kids, or what's in the market, and should we echo that in any way? We sort of four-wall ourselves up there, for better or worse, and we make what we what we want to make, and it's it's a really great. It's not perfect there, but it's a great support st um, of, of creativity, and and I think uh, we're all proud of the the way the stuff comes out of it that way. It's like women in comedy. It's it's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> same thing, right? You know, it's like a film. It's like comedy. Exactly. Women in comedy. Animated film. <laughs> oh, I see. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. It's just like, yeah, it's the same. <laughs> hmm. I think we'd like to be anger. Because I think he's really funny, right? <laughs> and I think I, I, think I, ha I could tap into that. Uh, I'm quite angry. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> um, but he, I like how he gets to scream and I, right? And you're like, you like him too. He's my boy's favorite because he just misbehaves and he says whatever he wants. And I just love that he's always, he's always like, this is never, he's just never going to work. And he's always just so, um, he's so funny.